to buzzing threads you have seen me create bee number one and bee number two so today it's now on to bee number three keep watching to find out about my process so here is the background for my quilt i decided to start with that i wanted to give it some kind of representation of the honeycomb um, and I wanted to be quite kind of creative with how I did it. I didn't want it to be a realistic representation. So I've taken some of my um, scraps from various dressmaking projects and made little hexagons, which I have then um, sewn on to a plain background. So um, these were just done around a template. I stitched it around the template with tacking stitches I then removed pressed it and then removed the template and I think I used a bit of glue as well just to make sure that it was holding its shape before I sewed it onto the background and then I just pinned it on and you can see I've just sewn across the diagonals so the next stage is working on the B and here is my B it's basically the same B as used for the previous two uh, slightly more detailed than my applique version but not too much detail because the quilt's quite small so there's a limit to how much detail that I can fit in so once I drew it all out you can see I've just put a few notes on here which is my plans for the colours just to remind myself just to help well when I um, prepare all the different pieces so I remember what goes with what. Here's a tracing of it so the tracing I then transferred onto my heat and bond you can see here a couple of the shapes ready to apply to fabric so that's all ready to go. So I have been through my fabric stash and selected some fabrics that I think I'm going to use for it. Um, I'm a little bit unsure at this stage which fabrics to use. I don't know whether to go quite bold like with this or to keep it more um, simple like this. I'm just thinking about how I balance the B against the quite colourful honeycomb and need to find the right kind of balance so the picture doesn't look too busy so I'm going to have those in my mind when I'm planning it this is going to be for the kind of really dark sections the eyes I've got some kind of blackish shades as well um, and I'm not sure which ones I'll use for that I think the okay there's some kind of bright colors on here and I quite like that kind of abstraction you get from using fabric that doesn't completely match with the bee and I think with the stitching added on it will add interest in some areas but still look a bit like a bee like it should so it's kind of about finding that balance again this is quite a busy fabric so I'm not sure how much I'm going to use of that if I want to go less busy I've got this option I might use a combination of both so that's the kind of next stage now is kind of planning how to use these fabrics together, which different sections, how many different ones to use. So I'm going to get on and do that. Okay, so all my fabric pieces are now prepared. Um, I've used numbering to make sure I know which piece goes where on the body because they're all quite similar. I end up using some of my kind of bright fabric um, but not too much as I said before it's about kind of not making it too busy and at the moment it doesn't all kind of pull together yet the fabrics are all quite different and quite contrasting so the stitching is going to be really important in order to make this piece work what I'm going to do next then is to um, stick it all on to this muslin and then that will be cut out and put onto the final piece 
you'll notice that the wings are missing at the moment I'm going to do the wings at the end I'm not going to be sticking onto this I'm going to do them slightly differently not completely sure how yet but I'll talk through that when I get to that stage so now the bee is being pieced together uh, next step is the stitching I've just put it beside the background just to reflect again on how much stitching I'm going to need to do so I'm planning to do quite a bit of stitching to blend in uh, the fabrics and just make it not so busy um, but what I really want to do is make sure I'm still leaving some pops of the pattern coming through so really important in this bit that I don't lose it all together um, and the same for the legs and, and, and these spotty sections I don't want to lose the fabric all together and I just need to make sure I kind of get the balance right so that's going to be quite a challenge and I'll update you when I've started on that So the thread painting is now done. I am going to do some more once I apply it to the background. I'll need to do more around the outside, but I've left that because I've got to now trim round this ready to fix it to the background. Here I am stitching it onto the background, going around the outside of the bee, going over the edge, adding in the thread painting that was needed just to finish off that edge of the bee. And here I am stitching the fragile wings. Okay, so I have now stitched the bee onto the background. I'm not going to add the wings until the end so I'm going to do the quilting now so here I've got my three layers of fabric I've got my thin cotton my batting layer and then my piece pinned together so I'm going to start stitching I'm going to go around the hexagons, uh, I'm going to do some details in invisible thread on the B. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of stitching, I'm probably not going to stitch the background but I'm going to have to have a think about that now. So here is the finished quilt, I have added the wings on, these are made with some tool they're a bit fragile but I've just about managed to make it work so I sewed these separately with the tool on some stitch and tear and then tore away the stitch and tear leaving the quite fragile wing but it, yeah as I said it's just about worked um, ideally I probably wouldn't have used that colour if I'd had more in my stash but I didn't want to have to buy something specifically so I've had to go with a kind of pinky coloured tool. For the background I have continued on the hexagons by stitching the hexagons so that you continue that pattern across the whole quilt. I'm fairly happy with how it's turned out. 